Hey folks, Shane D. April here, co-publisher and co-owner of Campaigns and Elections, here for another Campaign Insider interview. First, want to thank our Campaign Insider sponsor, Probolsky Research, for opinion research on politics and public policy. And I'd like to welcome Philip Stutz. He's welcome. the CEO of Go Big Media and the author of a brand new book coming out yeah. later this week, Fire Than Now, The Seven Lies Digital Marketers Sell, and the Truth About, how, uh, about Political Strategies That Help Businesses Win. Sure. So Philip, tell me why you decided to, to, to write this book and uh, uh, what's in here? Well, for your audience, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, a lot of people, when I first told them I wrote this book called Fire Them Now, they went, oh, this is a shot at the political industry. And it's right. anything but that. Right. Uh, actually, if you work in a, as a Democrat or Republican, a strategist, a digital marketer, a researcher, whatever, uh, it's sort of the principles behind political campaigns, what it looks like behind closed doors or uh, behind the curtain of political campaigns that actually can help them get corporate clients and, mm -hmm. and grow their business beyond just the political business. Yeah. And so, and I accidentally walked into this. So it was like a year and a half ago and I had a buddy of mine come to me and he has, uh, he's a CEO of a big company and he said, man, I don't know what you guys do in politics, but I'm intrigued. Would you guys work on sort of a digital marketing campaign for me and try to grow my business? I wrote about it in the book. He had had a marketing company that had, he was, uh, he was a, uh, has a huge real estate company in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And they were marketing uh, through the Wall Street Journal okay. Vacation Weekend Edition. And that's what the marketers had told him to do. Okay. And so he spent five figures and he got one lead out of all of that. Right. And he was like, what is going on? These guys are screwing me over. Yeah. And I was like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And so I started thinking about how we look at targeting in politics. Right and how we target voters. Yeah. And then we started digging into his business and the target market that would be you know, excited about sort of the properties he was selling. Yeah. And I lay out the story in the book, but we ended up, I think, with like 25% less budget. We ended up getting uh, close to a thousand leads for him. And I was like, wait a second, so there's something here. We're doing something right in politics. Right. And so we started going out and all of a sudden we started picking up more and more uh, corporate clients and we've got Fortune 200 companies under our belt now. Yeah. And everybody is intrigued by how we do it in politics. Right. And in that process, this is the coolest part, is that I talked to 100 CEOs over the last two years and they all started laying out these lies of the corporate marketing world. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is crazy because in politics we would never do this. And it, like, right. I kept having this conversation. And ultimately, one CEO a very, uh, of a, a Fortune 500 company said, oh, this is the worst thing I've ever gone through. And he started telling me the story. And I right. said, well, why don't you just fire him now? Right. And I was like, ooh, if I ever wrote a book, that would be a good title. That's a great title. And so that's, yeah. uh, that's the genesis of the title. Yeah, so, so, so you got seven lies. So, so I mean, give me, give me yeah. one, an example. Yeah, of I'll one. give you one because if I went through seven, it would be for an hour. <laughs> Because there's context, right? Sure, sure. But I'll give you one, and every political person is going to appreciate this, right? All right, it's called uh, long-term contracts. That's the first lie. So every corporate marketer out there, right, goes to these court companies and says, we want to run these cool corporate marketing campaigns for you, right. and we're going to grow your business and your ROI. And by the way, here's a 12 to 18 month unbreakable contract that you right. must sign to work with us. In fact, one of my buddies in Silicon Valley was forced to write a $75,000 upfront bonus check to that marketer. And, and I'm like, are you crazy? And in politics, no. we're month to month. Right. Every contract I've ever signed, whether I was in strategy or I was doing digital marketing with my company, Go Big Media, we've always been month to month. We right. could be fired at any minute. And the reason that's important is it forces us to put the success on the client first, not our checks. Right. So the corporate marketers, they get paid whether they succeed or not. I don't. I have to succeed. We also have election day in our business. So it's like the ultimate deadline. And everybody knows whether we win or lose in our entire business because you guys at Campaigns and Elections will tell everybody. And then, and, and, but that's my reputation. Right. The other thing that's really interesting though, Shane, our business is 100% referral and reputation. Yeah. You either win or you're out of business. I, I can't advert, I can't put an ad up and say hire my digital marketing company. No one in politics, we can be laughed out of business. Right. It's all based on your reputation. Yeah. And so if I can take that to a company and say, I'm not going to make money until you make money. I'm going to put all these principles in place and grow with you only if you grow first. 
That has been a massive game changer for these businesses. Yeah, yeah. Now, now talk about the, the the sort of culture that you encountered, a little bit more about the culture you encountered in talking to these CEOs, right? Because, uh, you know, a lot of people will criticize the culture of the political industry to say there's a lot of folks here that are adverse to change. Sure. Well, in, in the corporate marketing world, oh. I imagine that the, the, the dinosaurs are still, still rule. It's crazy. And the reason is, look, I don't think political, I mean, of course they're outliers, but I don't right. think the political world lacks innovation. In fact, I lay out about how we have to innovate because we have election day. Right. If we don't win on election day, if I'm not constantly thinking how do we improve what we're doing, our targeting, our ad concepts, our creative, if I'm not constantly trying to improve that, and I'm not talking about, and this is where the corporate and the political world works, I'm not talking about, oh, once a month, let's sit down with my team. It's like we're sitting down with our clients on a daily sure. basis. Yeah. Sometimes we're changing ad concepts on an hourly basis. Right. We don't test three or four concepts, we'll test 120 concepts yeah. uh, of one particular message. And, you know, and we do it at a lower cost than the corporate marketers do. Right. And so because, look, here's the thing that I think is most important in this whole thing. The, the world is changing. There's massive disruption going on. I lay out a ton of examples of the disruption going on in the economy. Ultimately, the economy will go to the customer and the clients mm -hmm. before anybody else. Mm -hmm. If you aren't putting them first and they don't know that you're putting them first, you're out of business. Yeah. And so too many marketers, especially on the corporate side, they think about getting their paycheck first and then working for their clients. Right. And we just don't do that in politics. Yeah. Hey, talk a little bit more about the digital side of things, right? Because the one thing that does come out of the corporate world is uh, willing to experiment with more things on the digital side, right? More, a larger percentage of budgets uh, very often go to uh, digital and larger corporate marketing campaigns mm -hmm. than, than even at this stage in 2018 we've seen from some campaigns. Sure. So, so, so talk about, in your experience of researching this, uh, what have you seen on the digital side and the, different, the key differences between each industry? Sure. Uh, yeah, they do. The, but the, the, on the corporate side, they do because their mentality is we get to spend their money. Right. Um, look, I say this, uh, and by the way, the book is has nothing with partisanship whatsoever. In fact, Donna Brazil is interviewed in the book, uh, blurbs it, and you know I'm a Republican, so this is really about how political principles and strategies help businesses. Right. Um, but you know, I talk about uh, in the book that you know we. Uh, we have sort of a convert first brand second mentality in politics. We have to convert the voter, and then once we've converted the voter, we constantly are branding to them to get them to encourage other people to vote, right. encourage uh, you know their friends to, to donate to the campaign. Yeah. And that mentality is an ROI first mentality. What these big budget corporate, corporate marketers do is they go in there and go, look, let's brand everything first. Mm. So they get this huge ad budget and they spend for a year and right. they make all this money right. and there's no really ROI, yeah. but they say they have this huge brand now. And then they say, give us more money and we're going to go out and, and do conversion. And I just think the mentality of that one thing is a, is a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, what, if, if you had a point to the most critical thing that you think from the political marketing world, uh, it could bleed over to the corporate side oh, and it yeah. would be a tremendous benefit, what would it be? So my favorite chapter in the book is this. Uh, it's called Going Negative. And 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 he, every, I can say every, the most fun. Every political person watching this right now is yeah. gonna know what we talk about. Like going negative on advertising is what we do. Right. And I talk about this. Like if there's a candidate out there and he says, I refuse to go negative in this campaign, and, <laughs> and then me, if I'm on the other side of that, go, yes, because we're about to win right. the race, right? right? We're about to club them in the face. Right. But so my thought is is that in the politically correct society we live in now, in the fact that everybody is scared to death to do anything with authenticity, mm. that this is an outlier strategy for businesses if done properly. Right. So what I mean by that is you don't go club them in the face like we do in politics, right? And in politics, you know, everybody complains about negative advertising, but we do it. Why? Because right. it works. Right. So if there's a smart way for businesses to do this, and I give examples, really, of a lot of businesses that have done this. One of the great examples uh, about 10 years ago was the Mac versus the PC, the, mm -hmm. the, two, uh, the nerdy PC guy and yeah. the hip, cool Mac guy. It was a great way that you didn't hit anybody over the head, you made it funny, but no one wanted to buy a Mac. Right. And, and that was, it was sort of an amalgam of Apple's launch into the iPhone, mm -hmm. into the Mac, you know, of having a bigger market than Mac computer. Yeah. And then recently, uh, I think it was um, a couple of weeks ago, a couple months ago, McDonald's put up a tweet 
and they it was like insert copy here so they mm -hmm. screwed up this tweet and then Wendy's responded right. with it says hey your tweets are broken like your ice cream machine like <laughs> So funny, no. nobody's offended by it. It right. shows authenticity, it shows humor. And we lay out a bunch of examples of how businesses have done this and grown their companies huge, in a huge factor. And so we sit down with businesses and we're like, hey, how can we do this in a fun way? How can we do no. comparative advertising in a way that's an outlier to everybody else in your industry? Yeah. And the key to the whole going negative is you almost want to have an underdog take the fight mm -hmm to the guy on top or yeah. the girl on top, right? Yeah. That's the most important thing. Cause yeah. then the public, the audience, the consumer, it gets behind the underdog in yeah. that search. So that's how you have to look at it. Yeah. Uh, one thing that uh, you, you talk about in the book and, and you wrote a piece for uh, campaignsandelections.com uh, mm -hmm. where you touched on this as well, uh, uh, transparency, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'd be interested in, if you can go a little bit more into uh, how you see that in the political marketing sure. world versus the corporate marketing world. Because as you very well know, it, it, it's one of the criticisms of folks on the political side digitally too, in saying, that you know yes well technically what we're what you're doing is transparent but how do we know that it's working right that's always the criticism sure well we now have a lot of analytics whether it be right. from Google or Facebook and their you know YouTube and Instagram that we know the conversion rates and they give us all of that feedback right. but look you know this is what we tell corporate uh, or tell companies when we go to talk to them like in our world uh, if I make an expenditure for a federal candidate, it's on the FEC website. In, the, in some most of the states, it's on their state websites. Like you can't get away with expenditures without the, at least it being public knowledge. Mm -hmm. But what that does is it shows a political campaign how much they're spending on digital. Mm -hmm. It doesn't show exactly what they're spending it on. Sure, like I'm not going to tell anybody that. That's for my client. Right. But it's very public, right? And then ultimately, because it's on these reports, people know we've worked for those campaigns, win or lose. Right. So there's amount of transparency that exists and the transparency of the fact that everybody knows who our clients are, our, our biggest competition in the marketplace will cut our legs out from under us if we lose a race. They're going to go out and trash us everywhere. Like, sure. You have to be right. above board. You have to be whatever it is. It's like, God, the client has to win because if yeah. not, it affects my business. So right. We put everybody first. Yeah. And that transparency forces us to do that and allow it's the right thing to do. Right. But on the corporate side, you know, we'll, we'll compete against some corporate marketing companies and all they do is talk about their wins, right? And the client in front of them does not know whether they have losses or not. Right. So how focused am I as a marketer, whether it be on corporate or political, mm -hmm. to, to succeed, to win? When we talk about that, there's a different verbiage that works. We right. talk about winning. They talk about, well, we want to grant, you know, get some market share. Right. They would say, I'm like, no, right. it's effing winning, man. Right. Like, right. that's what we're all about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Philip Stutz, CEO of Go Big Media, and he's the author of Fire Than Now, The Seven Lies Digital Markers Sell, and The Truth About Political Strategies That Help Businesses Win. Uh, if you are watching this interview, uh, uh, you can get a uh, ebook uh, yeah. copy of this, yes? So it comes out Thursday. It's not available until Thursday. The ebook will be available for 24 hours for your, for campaigns and elections watchers on this. For 99 cents, we'll put the ebook up on Thursday, the day it's released, for 99 cents. So uh, download it and uh, enjoy. Let me know. You can go to CEO, uh, my Facebook page is CEO Philip Stutz, and give me some feedback. I'd love to hear it. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Philip Stutz, for joining us. Yeah.